Hello my fellow comic book collectors, uh, it's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and um, today, unlike most Tuesdays, I do not have an unboxing that I'm going to be showing you, but I am going to show you something maybe even better. <laughs> so what I want to show you is my top five pickups that I got for this year. These are the five books that are the biggest that I've picked up so far this year. Um, and some of them, they're, just, they're all pretty big books. <laughs> so, um, and the ones that didn't make the list are actually big books. So um, they'll give you a sense. The very first book is a raw comic uh, that I got. And I was super excited to get this. Um, I think they originally wanted like, oh, I forgot what it was. It was like three, 4,000 or something crazy. Then they put it up for, um, then I kind of, I think I either so I talked it down or I did something. <laughs> it's something I, I forget how I got this. So the price that I did, but I really got it much cheaper, about half what they had wanted for, for it originally. Um, and it's Miss America number two. Um, this is actually a very cool book because it's the very first appearance of Patsy Walker in comics. Now it has this photo cover. Um, the girl that's actually pictured here. Um, she was a, she became a librarian later in life, but uh, she was just a young model. Uh, she was like, I think, 14 or 15 at the time of taking this photo. It's just a really cool um, bit of Americana as well. Um, this is actually the second appearance of this character, which is Miss America. But um, but the big thing that this book is known for is the, the Patsy Walker. And Patsy Walker later becomes Hellcat. So, um, just a very cool character, um, and to get our first appearance was a big deal. It's a rare book, too. It's a really hard book to find. Um, the next book, uh, this one was kind of interesting because I actually had two options for this book. Um, one was actually a slightly lower grade, but it was a blue label. And this was a slightly higher grade, but not, but a conserved grade. Um, and the reason I chose the book that I did was this one has a tendency of looking very bad. I don't know why. Uh, well, in terms of the the quality of the color. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So this was the one I chose of the two. And it's Brenda Starr number 14. And you'll notice that the greens in her dress are pretty, pretty sharp. That is really rare for this book. Um, this is a you know classic cover by uh, Jack Kamen, and um, you know she's tapping out SOS with uh, her handcuff, uh, or some kind of maybe a, oh sorry it's a horseshoe sorry, uh, but she's in bondage and it's just a just a really great classic you know <laughs> cover, uh, you know looks like she's in pretty disrepair kind of status. <laughs> um, and, but this cover, uh, the reason I chose the restored one, uh, not restored, but conserved, uh, was because of the colors. It's really hard to get it with these really bright greens. Um, every time I see it, her dress is always very faded, almost yellow. Um, but it is a bright green dress. Um, so yeah, it's just a classic cover. I was super excited to get this one. It's a really hard book to get. Um, so this is um, Brenda Starr, number 14, from 1948, a classic Good Girl art cover. Okay, so that's... So the, the next one actually was one of the ones that was on my top 10 list. Um, and I had a pretty crazy experience trying to get this book. Um, when I put it on the top 10 list, I actually did it knowing that I was going to get it. Or at least that's what I thought. So what happened was um, there was a low grade, I think it was a 2.0 that came up for auction around the time that I made my top 10 list for 2023. And what I thought was going to happen was I would easily win because of what I did was I looked up the fair market value and I put in to almost two, and a, like two times what the fair market value was, what I believe the fair market value was. And so I thought, okay, there's no way I'm going to lose out on this book. And the book, and so that was around $5,000 that I put as a, what I thought was well above the fair market value. And it was, it was hovering around a thousand. So it was like five times what the, the current bid was. So I was, I'm going to win this book. So 
so the, the auction day comes up and I, I was shocked. I was just shocked. The bid kept on going and going past my bid. I put it a little bit higher, went to 5,600 and then it kept on going, <laughs> just kept on going. It went up to 11,000 and I was like, oh man, for a 2-0, I was like, wow, that is just insane. I was like way above what I expected. And then um, there was another another opportunity. So I missed out on that first one. I put it on the list thinking, oh, I was going to easily get this book. And then there was another opportunity that came up. Somebody on eBay had a copy. And obviously they saw that big sale. And theirs was a 3 And so they put, I think they put their value at 18000 So really high value. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's reasonable based on the sale actually um but i tried to talk them down and i actually talked them down to i think it was like 14 or 15 but they they had to think about it they were going to come back to me and i was like coming back to them if we could really agree on that price and so it was a lot of money and i was like i would have to do installments and it was you know there was a lot to it so we were sort of negotiating and um then a third copy came up so I was like, oh, maybe this is my chance. And it was a restored copy, but it was a higher grade, much higher grade, and, and really quite nice uh, book. And it's this one. And um, I won it for 5000 So about like a little bit more than half of what, <laughs> in terms of price, of the 2 and a third of the price of the 3 So I was quite happy. <laughs> I was quite happy to get it for that. Uh, it's a 7 0. It does have moderate restoration and um, it has color touch, pieces added, reinforced from the collection of John Burke. So that's kind of cool. And it's, you know, got a bit of provenance behind it. Um, it's just a beautiful presenting copy, too. So, you know, I'm, I'm fine that it's restored. Got it for a good price as a result. And you're probably wondering why would I. Put so much effort to get this one book and why was it on my hot list you know the most desired books for for 2023 well the reason is it's the very first appearance of plastic man you got him right there plastic man but it's also the first appearance of uh phantom lady so a couple of cool big first appearances actually there's other first appearances in this book it actually lists them all out uh, it's the first appearance of Plastic Man, first appearance of Phantom Lady, first appearance of Firebrand, and the Human Bomb. So a whole bunch of characters made their first appearance in this book. So just a great book to pick up. You know, I was like super excited to <laughs> finally get this book. It was a book that I actually wanted since I was a kid. Um, I, I think I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. Um, when I was a kid, I I, I liked... You know, I, I sort of grew up reading Disney and reading like, you know, Richie Rich and kind of the more tame characters. And my parents really didn't let me get any of the superhero characters. But one character that was kind of in between, like, you know, that kind of Disney <laughs> level or kind of humorous level was Plastic Man. And I always thought he was kind of fun. You know, he's stretchy and kind of cool. And um, so I actually tried to pick up his first appearance as a child. I, I, when I was a child, um, we went on a we went on a field trip to Ottawa of all places, and I went into a comic store and asked, "Hey, do you have the first appearance of Plastic Man?" And of course, they sold me uh, for two dollars. I remember how much I paid. Uh, Plastic Man number two, uh, number one, which which I thought, oh, that must be his first appearance. Of course, it was like the fourth or the third or fourth se series of Plastic Man, so obviously not his first appearance. Um, but I didn't know at the time. And we didn't have the internet. We didn't have all those resources where you could look up what was the first appearance of Plastic Man. So I was, you know, disappointed later when I found out that indeed that was not the first appearance of Plastic Man. So I'd have wanted this book since I was a kid, and just to finally get it was a big deal. So... I'm quite happy to to get this book. I just love it. I think it's the coolest thing. Actually, when I film these videos, I actually have this very copy right there. <laughs> and I always I like looking at it. I just always excited to see it. 
So, um, that's Police Comics number one from 1941. Uh, and just, a, I always like Plastic Man. I always thought he was fun. The next book is another big one. So, th the way I kind of rank these is in order of prices. So, <laughs> you know, uh, they're, you can see that they're getting more and more expensive as it goes. Uh, this next one I just showed in a recent unboxing. So if you watch my grand finale from last week, um, I showed this book. And it's a Phantom Lady number 17. This is uh, Matt Baker and um, uh, I think it's... <laughs> it's known as a Matt Baker cover. I'll leave it at that, actually. If you watch my other video, I get into details about it. But uh, it's just a classic good girl art cover. It's probably it's considered probably to be Matt Baker's number one uh, recognized um, good girl art cover. Uh, this book usually commands huge money. It's actually the most expensive comic, other than one other one. It's probably the second most expensive comic that isn't a superhero comic. Well, actually, she is a superhero, but. Um, you know, it's outside of like, you know, like the, the DCs and the, and the Marvel books. It's the, the biggest, it had a $400,000 sale. I think for, I think it was for a promise collection copy of it. I think it was a nine something, um, copy, but, um, this is eight, five, <laughs> really high grade, but it is restored. Um, the restoration is cover was cleaned. I believe also the staples were cleaned. Um, so, um, were they cleaned or replaced as well? Um, restoration includes small amount of color touch on the cover. Pine, a sp a spine split sealed to cover. Cover cleaned, cover reinforced, staples cleaned. So, um, the, the, it actually gets a slight rest restoration. Um, there was a little bit, you could see right around here, where they cleaned the cover a little bit. I'm not sure where the color touch is, but I think it would be very slight. Um, I think it might be in the screen. I, I, I might get a, like my purple light and kind of examine it and see where the color touch is. But um, it's very slight. Probably if I removed all the restoration and stuff, um, it might grade at around a 6, I would say, or maybe... In that range, I would say. Um, maybe lower because it does say spine split, but who knows how much of a spine split it is. But the point is, I'm not, I'm not, I would never do any of that. <laughs> I'm quite happy with the 8.5. Um, there was a 1.0 that sold for uh, more than this, of what I paid for this. I paid 14000 for this book. And I just, you know, I can't understand <laughs> why you would, you know, pass up this book uh, to get a much lower grade that doesn't present very well at all when you can get such a beautiful presenting copy for a better price. So I was quite happy to get this uh, 8.5 um, Phantom Lady number 17. The other great thing about this book is not just it's, you know, considered to be Matt Baker's, one of his finest works. Um, but it's also one that was mentioned in the Seduction of the Innocent. And I collect all the books from Seduction of the Innocent. I'm only missing like three or four now. Um, and, you know, it was exciting for me to get one of the bigger books from the Seduction of the Innocent collection. So um, those are, who are not familiar with Seduction of the Innocent, well, it's a, it was the, it was, it was a book written by Frederick Wortham uh, about how comics were having a bad effect on children and leading to juvenile delinquency. And um, they thought things like this, which were overly sexualized or what what he called headlight covers um, <laughs> for the headlights, um, were having a bad effect on children. And uh, he, he actually, in his book, The Seduction of Innocent, he used the this image inside the book to showcase um, the over-sexualization of comics. So very classic, it's a classic book. Uh, a lot of you know, collectors chasing after it. And it's a fairly rare book. Um, you know, I think there's less than 50 on the census. It's, it's a fairly rare book. Um, and those, so those are 
my like number one uh, number five four three two well my biggest book that i picked up this year and actually i was i picked it up last year in a way um but i finally just made the, the payments <laughs> completed all the payments for it this year so i'm calling it a this year pickup um is this book that i'm holding right now um this one i really love i i I love these characters as a kid. I, I thought they were the coolest thing. I watched all their movies. Um, this is not a golden age book. All the rest were golden age. But this is not a golden age book. Um, there's less than a thousand of these on the census. There's only 3,000 that were printed in the beginning, like when they when they printed them. All the other books that I showed had much higher print counts originally. Um, but this one had a very low print count. Um, but it's instant was an instant classic. Um, it's a book that, you know, I'm super ha happy to have in my collection. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, the first print. Um, it is just such a hard book to get. And um, this one is uh, uh, just a really great one. So it's Origin and First Appearance of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Splinter and Shredder, wraparound cover. Wraparound cover. And it is... Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, Story and Art. Kevin Eastman cover. Actually, I thought I was told that there was a signature inside this one as well, um, but it doesn't denote it in the, the notes. But I'm pretty sure that um, the guy that um, sold this to me mentioned that I, it was signed inside as well. But um, yeah, so I, <laughs> just a really great book, um, you know, cop one of the i guess it would be considered the copper age grail book um just a classic book uh this is this one led to so much it, it led to like a billion dollar industry which is the turtles um so yeah just a classic book i just love it uh, <laughs> i was i could I, I never thought i could actually achieve this one um i had looked at many copies um but the price was just always so high um, because it is the turtles book to get um yeah so teenage mutant ninja turtles is number one on my list so, yeah so those are the my top five uh, pickups for 2023 so far we're at the halfway point for the year i you know maybe some bigger books coming at the end of this year i don't know <laughs> we'll see um if i can afford all these things um, but yeah, what do you think of my top five? Uh, what are your top five books that you've picked up this year? I'd love to hear it in the comments below. So thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed these videos. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more cool videos. And I'm going to be returning to doing unboxings next week. So even Thursday, I'm not doing an unboxing. It's next week that I will be doing a pretty cool unboxing. Um, so stay tuned for that. But this week, we're going to take a break from unboxings. So um, stay tuned for next week uh, because there's going to be some pretty cool stuff. So thanks again for watching. Bye for now.